Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared, and we have a full Kubi review. Now, this is one that has been very impressive to me. And we're going to get into sharpening Kubi's D2 and, you know, the cutting performance, blade geometry, all the good stuff. Let's get into it. So, also, I'm going to link um, this knife below. This is a large knife. This is not a small knife. And just so you can kind of get a little bit of a reference, I usually don't do size comparisons, but it's basically the same size as a PM2, a Manix. Um, it's definitely a full size knife. Now, um, I kind of look at it like it's kind of like a budget Koenig Arius. I did have a Koenig Arius recently in for sharpening, and I did take a little clip of them side by side, and you can see why. I, you know, it just, they look, they have a similar shape, I guess you could say. Um, obviously, the Koenig Arius is a very, very expensive knife made in the USA, but this is... Man, it's a very solid knife. Let's get into the action, then we'll get into the ergos and cutting performance. Well, the, the flipper tab is nice and high above the pivot, the center of the pivot. So, you one, that means you're going to have a lot of leverage through the flipping action. And the detent is nice and, nice and well-tuned. I don't even want to say strong, but it, it is a strong detent perfectly tuned for this flipper tab and flipping action nice jimping on it very grippy and you it's very comfortable and it feels very reliable to flip it's hard to fail because of all the leverage you know if it would be if it was center of the pivot it might be hard or it might be easier to fail but because it's so high it's hard to fail especially when you break this detent good access to the liner when you unlock it, the detent is nice and early, so you're always past that detent. We have fall shut action. It took about maybe a day of me fidgeting, before, you know, in this thing. I mean, it was smooth, fresh out of the box, but it became fall shut action very quickly. The reverse flicking action, very, very good. And because of the placement of where this hole is and the flipper tab is, makes it to where you can have a nice strong detent for the flipping action and great detent for the reverse flicking action. Now, um, you see how this has this jimping right here? Well, you're kind of pushing that direction. So seeing that you have, even though the hole isn't very big, you're, you're kind of pushing up into that flat area and it gives you quite a bit of leverage there too. So great reverse flicking action and equally as good thumb flicking action, which is kind of hard to get. You know, usually you have one flipping system that is the best above all. In this case, every single one of them are very good. Every single one is, is it, the detent is perfectly tuned for it and also the leverage and the placement. Now, like I said, drop shut action, perfectly centered, locked up, super solid. We have ceramic caged bearings and a ceramic detent ball, nice size detent ball, but it's kind of hidden in there. Regardless, it's a, it's a good size detent ball. Now, the lockup. Listen to this lockup. It is very, very locked up. I mean, it just, you can feel it pull into the lock position when you slow roll it. If you've ever held a knife that when you get to this point, it just kind of locks itself in. That's the way this is. And the acoustics are really nice. Not like, uh, you know, it's not like a, you know, like an amazing, amazing sound knife, but you, you know, I, I learned to appreciate these little sounds like that lock up you can hear the detent right there. I really appreciate um, those little clicks and clacks because that reassures me that this thing is locked up very solid and boy, is it solid. T10 pivot. I actually made a mistake the other day when I reviewed another Kubi knife and I accidentally said that that one had a T10 pivot, but this one does. T10 pivot, T8 hardware all the way around. We have T6 screws on the pocket clip, but T8 body and T10 pivot. Awesome. I love to see that. Thank you, Kubi. That's amazing. Loved. Oh, yeah. Speaking of Kubi, Kubi did send this to me, by the way. I just want to get that out there. 
And uh, Kubi has supported us many, many times over. Um, I do like Kubi knives, so uh, I appreciate them, you know, uh, sending knives for us to review. But that will not affect my review whatsoever. They know that, and I'm just going to review it as it is. So, and I think most of my, my viewers know that at this point. Now, the Ergos, the Ergos are very comfortable, however... And it's not a bad, however, but it is tall. You, you can see how tall this handle is. Now, it has a good thickness, but you do feel that because it's flat, you know, since it's, you know, you do have the edges that are chamfered. But in this grip, that's one thing that stands out is that it's tall. And I mean that this way, broad, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it's not that it, it's it's not thin. It's not wide. It's just normal for the thickness. But because of its thickness with this dimension right here you do notice that but it it is pretty comfortable um you know it is a large knife so it's going to fit large hands um and then you do have a little spot you can choke up to if you really want to or for push cuts you have lots of leverage that the, you have um a good grip on the knife the, the scales are nice and grippy even in the you know, reverse grip where you're going to cut straps and stuff. You're very locked in. Nice, good pinch grips. You know, if you are going to do some fine tuning or fine uh, tasks and stuff. Now, the cutting performance. Man, this thing cuts like a beast. This thing cuts so good. One, the leverage is definitely going to have a part in that, right? You do have a lot of leverage into your cuts. So that's going to maximize the force you can put into your cuts. Plus, this thing's practical. It's not a full flat, obviously. In this section, it's a full flat. But you see, we have um, an, um, you know, this section up here that doesn't make it a full flat. But man, does it cut incredibly well! It's slicing and push cuts. All of them are exceptional. They're they're just. It's an amazing cutter. And that's, and that's without being super thin behind the edge and it's because of how tall the flat grind is it's about 20 thousandths behind the edge and but you know they did the geometry right because they did the nice taper the spine of the blade isn't overly thick you know it's in a nice you know medium category of basically uh a tough knife but the geometry going down to the edge you know it it's nice and it does have a nice taper and it works incredibly well now you do have a quite a big belly here so it's you can get to the tip and you can do it for use it for utility cuts and the utility cuts are just fine but you do have quite a bit of belly here so sometimes you wind up cutting with the belly a little bit more than the tip and the tip is nice and durable and strong but all in all the utility cuts they work just fine you don't have to lift up too high but you do have to lift up a little bit so you might lose a little bit of leverage you know doing those type of utility cuts and seeing as how the tip is not dainty you know it's more of a durable tip yet very good for utility cuts so you know it works fine it works good you notice we have jimping over here on the spine a nice little spot to really you know get leverage down into like if you're going to do a cut like this you can really maximize that force because of the way you lock in you know, push cuts right here. This goes against your palm really nicely. So the cutting performance and utility cuts and all that are just amazing. Now, when we get into the clip and carry, so we have a deep carry clip that is reversible. So lefties, this is a great option for you because it is, it's not a frame lock, first of all. Um, the action is amazing and the, the clip is reversible. So that's awesome. Now the clip, it works okay. I have a complaint. I complained about it with my last Kubi, and we'll talk about that when we get into the bad. But all in all, it works. It's a deep carry clip, and going in and out of the pocket is okay until you get to that this little section right here when you're, you know, sometimes your 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 pants or whatever hit right there, and then you got to get it up and over it. I would have rathered them inset the clip. In my opinion, I'd rather the clip work very well. You know, yes, that would mean there'd be a little hole right here. But to me, as long as the clip works good, that's what I care about. Now, next thing. Sharpening their D2. So, I did want to sharpen it. Now, um, 
One, it, you know, the edge, the factory edges, you know, they hold up as good as they do. They're not always great. A lot of times they have burnt edges. Um, so I did want to sharpen this up, not only for the video, but also for the cutting performance. Because, you know, the difference between how good it cut before I sharpened it versus how good it cut after I sharpened it, it doubled. The cutting performance doubled after sharpening it. I laid back the angle of my edge to about 17 degrees per side and I sharpened it on Veneev diamond stones. However, I did not go past my first stone. I only sharpened it on 165 slash 125 micron. So it's an incredibly coarse grit. Now, I'm not saying you have to sharpen yours that low of a grit. I do recommend right around 600 grit for D2. In my opinion, D2 at 600 grit, that's the best edge the D2 takes, in my opinion. Now, I went a little coarser on this one um, just because I only wanted to sharpen it just to do this video and get the angle done. So, And I, I'm going to end up resharpening it again after this. So it wasn't that big of a deal to me. However, when I got on the stone, it sharpened up really, really good. Um, it was easy to keep my angle. It felt really good on the stone. The D2 did not feel bad. No problem sharpening it. It did sharpen up really good. I do have one little issue with the grind. We'll talk about that here in a second. But just the steel on the stone felt good. Sharpened up really good. Took an incredibly sharp edge. And, you know, if you want to know a little trick, not just with D2, but a lot of other steels that works really good, is after you get your burr on the one side and you flip sides and you get the burr on the other side. So now you have a burr hanging over on one side of your edge. Take a ceramic rod of whatever. Um, in this little clip, I'm going to use my uh, work sharp field sharpener and do a very, very light pass on that ceramic rod. Flip it over, do a very, very light pass. Just one pass per side. All you're doing is making the burr bend back and forth to snap off. That's it. So basically the ceramic rod is going to snag the burr and tear it off. That's it. Then hit the strop. Five to 10 passes per side. That will get you an incredibly sharp edge, um, especially with like a toothy edge like this one. You know, you just don't want to put any pressure onto the ceramic rod. Do it very, very lightly and make sure your angle is held higher than the angle you sharpened it at because you're only trying to get the very tip of the apex. And after you're done, take your nail and run the edge down the, your nail to make sure you don't feel any nicks. Make sure, you know, it's nice and clean, should be very smooth. Uh, but yeah, even with this extremely coarse edge, you can see how cleanly it cuts through paper, it cuts through paper very cleanly. And this is about as aggressive an edge, aggressive of an edge that anybody would, would want on their knife. We will look at it. This is a very, very coarse edge. Now this is after I've used it too. So, and it did, you can see how aggressive that it edges and to me i love it i think this is a great edge i think this is a great working edge this is an edge that possibly performs better than any other edge for normal edc tasks um well not just this edge but you know a coarse edge a coarse to medium grit edge uh this is just going to be a little bit more aggressive than a medium grit edge but my point is is you know, having a medium to coarse grit edge makes for cutting performance just so much uh, better in most cases. Now, obviously, there are some materials that polished edges do better on or finer edges do better on, but most EDC tasks, aggressive edges do the best. Now, getting into some of the negative things. So when I was sharpening it, now, first of all, the choil was fine. The plunge grind starts here and it ends about right here. So the plunge grind was great on this. I'm very happy. You can see actually where the, the light hits right there. You can see where the plunge grind ends. Great plunge grind, perfectly fine. But you'll look over here on this side. Look how much bigger this bevel is from here back versus this side from here back. This is larger on this side. That is the grind. Now, it's hard to complain about that too much. This is a very affordable knife, and it's not going to hurt anything. It's not going to do anything. It's just a visual thing, and it's very small. Now, most likely, I'll be able to work that out, you know, over my next 
couple stones after you know I sharpen it again. Like I said, I only used one stone on it, my coarsest stone or my coarsest Veneve stone, and I just you know put a 17 degree angle on both sides and was finished. Now also you might see right here back in the corner uh, that's not completely hit perfect because it's a little thicker right there on this side. This side was easy to get to, but like that's going to come out. It's just, you know, this is a little tiny bit thicker on this side. So the angle is slightly off just right there. All the rest was pretty good, but you know, not that big of a deal. Um, a lot of grinds, even on more expensive knives are off a little bit, you know, it's just kind of the nature of grinds and knives but for the most part it, it's decent it's really not that horrible i am very much nitpicking next thing the clip i was saying it already if you know they should have inset it that little ledge right there it is a little tight right there to squeeze um thick jeans especially you know underneath here and then expect it to get over this spot right there that's tough so it's not that bad, it's just right on the verge. It's literally right on the verge. So it would be better if they just inset it or put a little bit taller clip. I did hear some people saying that a lot of clips fit this spot. So if you have other knives, you could possibly switch it out. Um, but other than that, those are really the only real negative things I could come up with on this. I mean, everything else is really nice. The stop pin is an okay size. It's average size. I do kind of wish it was slightly bigger, although it's not too small. I just like big stop pins, and that one's not small. It's just average. But being that this is a larger knife, or a full size knife, I would prefer its stop pin to be bigger than their medium size knife. Two different size knives, same size stop pin. I'd prefer a little bit bigger one on here. Now, is this a weak stop pin? Not at all. You know, it's going to be just fine. And the lockup is nice and early, just the way I like it. It has plenty of travel. The lock face geometry is fantastic. Very strong lockup. Um, yeah, all in all, man, this thing is very solid. Lots of milling on the inside, as you can see. So it brings down the weight. This thing isn't as, you know, for as big as it is, this thing is relatively light. Um, I do like the weight of it. And I enjoy carrying it. I enjoy using it. I, I think this is a fantastic purchase. Um, this is a knife that, in my opinion, is standing up next to all my other budget knives of the year. Um, and in a lot of cases, I wind up wanting to grab this one over even more expensive knives a lot of the time. It's just a great knife. It is. The stone wash is, it, they, I think they call it a bead blast, um, or maybe they call it a stone wash. I'm not sure, but it is a stone wash and it looks good. Nothing wrong with the stone wash. It's definitely going to help hide scratches. Um, the fuller down there, you can't really get to it. So you're going to use the hole. I'm just touching on little things I might've forgotten, but yeah, all in all, man, this is a solid, solid knife. All right, guys. I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Oh, wait, one more thing. I wish they would have put T8 screws in here. So I do wish they would have put T8 screws in here. Is that big, a big deal? No, but if you're going to switch the clip, they do have a T8 over here that if you switch the clip, you're going to have to move this screw over here and replace these ones over here. But, you know, it would have been nice just to have T8s all the way around. Not that big of a deal, though. It is just the clip. But, you know, nitpicks, nitpicks, nitpicks. Um, the texture, really good. Nice. It's a nice medium to, uh, to I don't want to say aggressive, but... It does have some good texture to it, which I actually do like, especially for a little bit of a harder use knife. And in this case, this is a great example of a good hard use knife that didn't go overboard. So there you guys go. I love you guys and I appreciate you guys watching. Peace.